they left their deposit and like they watch the driveway. They left their deposit the for the cars. <laughs> Keep it simple. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Keep It Simple. As you can see, we're all online this time uh, because we're all working from home. But things are still going to go on as per usual even though Chris is not here today. But uh, I think today's topic is quite interesting and I think you guys would be interested uh, to hear more about it. It's actually about renting. Yeah, and that's why today I roped in two of my colleagues, uh, Marcus and Nicole, both from, uh, well, I mean, you're both from Malaysia, right? But yes. I mean, yeah. Um, to give some context, we're going to talk about the renting experience in both Singapore and Malaysia, uh, which is why my two colleagues are here to help me and to kind of just share their own experiences. Uh, yeah, so hi guys. Welcome to the Cool Kids Club. Hello. I know you've been waiting to get on the... Club. Yeah, I know you've been waiting to get here for a long time, so... <laughs> I don't think yeah. we were waiting to get on here. No, no, I think you <laughs> were. It's fine. You can be honest with me. It's okay. It's a safe space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, let's get into it, I guess. Um, I think there are latency issues. We know it's fine. We're just going to power through it. So, um, maybe let's start with uh, Marcus, I guess. Uh, let's just talk about your renting experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll talk about where I live right now. So I've uh, I've been renting in this place for four years. I got this place because I got married. Um, so that's when I first moved out to my parents' house. Uh, it's a terrace place. It's in an old neighborhood uh, in Taling Jaya. Uh, and it's really quiet and far from the city and uh, I love it. Wow, sounds very peaceful. Terrace house, Samoa. That means very big uh, your house. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, but accommodation is just kind of you know regular it's just a house sorry, <laughs> it's, a sorry, yeah. it's a little bit longer uh, it's a little bit longer than others it's just a little okay. bit longer than other houses but that's it yeah, not, right not right but, okay so you are like upsized uh, we get the small houses you all get the super big terraces <laughs> well because there's okay, more land okay. in Malaysia so yes I cannot deny geography as geography would have it yeah as God himself would have it. <laughs> it really is as God would. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. God. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's, I can't fight this. I can't change land mass of Singapore. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So what about uh, Nicole? Tell us more about your experiences with like renting and stuff, uh, where you live right now. Yeah, so uh, I've been renting since uh, 2019. So it's about three, two, two-ish years, almost three years of renting. Um, so my situation is a bit more unique in that uh, I am a Malaysian living in Singapore and because I'm living and working in Singapore and away from family um, obviously I have to rent a place uh, my parents aren't loaded to you know own a, pl- own a place in both Singapore and in Malaysia <laughs> um, so yeah yes. so currently I live in a HDP flat with um, two housemates uh, and we rent a mm-hmm. three bedroom um, HDP flat yeah so right. that's my that's okay. my deal Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so, about like each of you, right? So, how long have you guys been living in like a rented space? Like number of years? How long um, has it been going on? Yeah, for me, so in Singapore, I I've rented already. Like I said just now, right? Like two years, two to three years already. Um, interestingly enough, I had I have been in like several different rental situations. So I had rented a whole place on my own before and then I've also um, rented a space with housemates who are my friends and then also well now I I live with um, just housemates strangers people who aren't my friends so I have had like the full renting experience in, in that you know they have like different different dynamics I guess so like living alone is a little bit more freeing but can tend to get like lonely you end up just like talking to yourself in the house be like oh how are you oh i'm renting <laughs> oh um uh g- good to know i'm not the only one who does this so yeah it's like it's like sometimes yeah. i'm like you know oh what are we going to have for lunch today um i don't know let's see what's in the fridge uh you so you kind of oh get, go crazy you kind of go crazy after a while <laughs> Oh, but then when I... I see, I see. Well, 
Yeah. Yeah. But then when I stayed with friends, um, then it was a little bit more fun, I guess, because then you got like other people to talk to, so you don't go insane. Well, just to let you know, I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> uh, from one, you know, self talker to another. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, Marcus, how long have you been living in your really big house? In the really big country. It's not that big. <laughs> okay, uh, I've been living here four years. Uh, originally, I rented this place with my brother-in-law and sister-in-law uh, to save on the cost of rent. Basically, the both of us, the, to the two families, we decided that we wanted to save on renting. Um, they moved out maybe one and a half years ago because they had their first kid. Uh, so now, I just live here with me, my wife, and uh, my kid. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, just to give our our listeners context about me, because I'm also renting. So all three of us in this chat right now, uh, all living in like rented spaces of our own. So for me, I've been renting properly for about I want to say one and a half years, maybe or, or nearly two years. Yeah. So I'm I'm living with uh, I'm not really living with strangers actually. It's uh, my friend's family that I'm living with, and I think I mentioned this before in like uh, one of our. In fact, our very first episode was about this topic. Um, uh, except it was just me and Pris. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I've been renting for about one and a half years, um, and I will say that for me, I'm paying below market rate for my rent because you know friend discounts and stuff. Yeah. Um, but on that note, I want to ask you guys like so. Since you guys have been renting, uh, what's the what's the cost like for you guys? Is it very uh, <laughs> expensive, especially for you know our friend with the big house in the big country? <laughs> yeah, in the mansion that he's living in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To give some context, right? The place is only about two thousand square feet uh, mm. and two floors, and the rent is definitely below market rate because I rent it from a friend of a friend. So uh, this person, she just has this place. She's moved away to Australia, basically. So she's just actually looking for like a house sitter. So mm. just pay her a uh, minimum amount, she'll accept it. Lah. Yeah, so yeah, I want to I wanna say it's below market rate. Lah. So oh, okay. you know how much a studio apartment right. house in Malaysia, in the city, then right. divide that by two. Maybe three depends. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Right, it's a good rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, as, as I say that the conveniences will be different. So like, if you go into a apartment, you have like new furnishing and stuff. Uh, the, the kitchen is more equipped. The toilets are uh, you know nicer. The, the, the all the all the doors are like newer. Everything is newer, like, You know so. This house is maybe uh, 30, 30 years old already. Maybe 30 to 40 years old. So, wow. yeah, you, you get like, what, what comes with a 30 to 40 year old house. Huh? Which is what? Like what? I see. All the cracks and, and tearing walls and the ghosts and stuff, is it? Yes. So, one morning we woke up, right? The I went to the toilet and the tiles actually all fell off uh, at night. So, don't know what happened, but the wall... <laughs> All the tiles okay. just like popped out. So <laughs> it's the ghost. Old, uh, old, right? <laughs> it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't think of a ghost first, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not putting on a show in the toilet. That's why it's like quite angry. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, <laughs> we call a contractor. <laughs> the contractor <laughs> took a look and he's like, "Yeah, it's just a whole house. What can you do? If you want to fix it, you have to." basically break down the whole wall to change all the tiles oh, and if you change all the tiles there you have to change the rest of the tiles because they don't make oh, the tiles anymore right so you have to change the whole right. tile so you're like oh my god that's true yeah. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> just left. so we just left it oh no i was just gonna ask like so was the onus on you to be the one to actually change the tiles because you're just a renter right you're just a tenant yeah uh, it wouldn't be on me to change the tiles but I also don't really care. <laughs> There's no car there, so so we didn't bring it up, lah. <laughs> I told my uh, my the landlord, and mm-hmm. she's also like, yeah, if it's not a safety issue and you die, you guys don't mind, we just don't, we just leave it, lah. So I was like, yeah, just clear up all the tiles and then <laughs> there you yeah. have a bare wall there, lah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Ah. Okay. So it seems like you know we're all like quite experienced with renting, um, and I think. 
you know, our listeners might be interested in the topic because I think uh, personally, I've been hearing a lot more you know, from my friends about like, you know, them wanting to move out, uh, things like that. I think also partially because of the whole uh, work from home, semi lockdown situation in Singapore and, you know, across, across the board, it's just like the pandemic is just making us all stay home more. Uh, so we consider, we're starting, we're starting to consider moving out on our own a little bit more. But you know, like, renting in Singapore is like super expensive. What are some considerations when you guys move out and find a place to rent, you know, uh, each of you? What do you look out for? Uh, maybe you can start with Marcus. Okay. What am yeah. I looking for? So, when I first moved out, the first consideration was actually cost. Because um, mm-hmm. when I got married, we the first thing we agreed on was that we cannot live with our parents. We must live on our own, even if it's just like one door away, it's okay, but we just have to stay on our own. Uh, but then, yeah, so the cost was the biggest factor. So we looked into a few places, few studios, um, but then the, the cost was just a bit too high. So that's how we ended up with sharing the, the terrace house with my in-laws. Huh? So mm. space, uh, space-wise also, it really helped because if you share with another person, uh, another family, you know, uh, we needed that space just to make sure that we have our own private lives and also we don't like clash too much in the kitchen and the toilet <coughs> and stuff, those kind of situations. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, so that's all. That was, but mainly finance was the consideration. Okay. Can I ask how you set your, like your budget for the rent? Like, do you have a fixed amount in mind before you look or you kind of just make it up as you go? <laughs> yeah, for us, we had a fixed amount, uh, definitely. We knew like this much, we can play around this, uh, this amount of money. Uh, more than that, you know, then we will be dipping into savings and like stuff like that. Mm. And if more than that, we know like uh, we cannot pay all our bills, lah, basically. So mm. that's, uh, that's, how we, that's how we decided. Lah. Okay, so the consideration for you, Marcus, was like cost. Anything else other than that? Location, we looked, thought about it a little bit uh, to, to match with where we, where we go to work. Mm. But at the end of the day, we're like, mm, any location will be fine. Lah. Just thank goodness mm. that we found a place that's like near our work, uh, near mm. our work back then. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so, what about you, Nicole? What were your considerations when you were looking for places to rent? Uh, it's pretty much the same with Marcus actually. So, um, definitely the first was um cost, and then space, and then also location. So, cost wise, uh, when I was moving to Singapore, I was looking for places where the room cost was uh, below a uh, thousand sing. So a thousand things I think on the higher end for, for room rental in Singapore. So you can probably get like a place that's closer to CBD area, you know, some of the more um, um, central areas. Um, but if you go further out uh, to the east, so I, says, I currently live in the east, so um, you can actually find places from like 600 to 900 um, for, for a room yeah so so I was looking for places that were below a uh, thousand sing per, for the room um, I also was considering so at that point I didn't have um, people to um, didn't have people to like share a space with so I was kind of looking also at like um, staying with landlords right but I didn't really want to because I hear like a lot of horror, horror, horror stories about Singaporean landlords. Uh, from my other Malaysian friends, like they're not allowed to use, they're not allowed to use the kitchen, and they can't, like they have like restrictions on like what time they can on the aircon. You can only on the aircon from like six pm to like eight am the next day, and you can only do your laundry on like Thursdays. You can't, can't you can't use the laundry machine like any other time. So so uh, I was a bit hesitant to 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 stay with the landlord, but then uh, when I moved here, I just kind of reached out to like most of my friends that were here like any Malaysian person that I knew I was just like hey do you know anyone that wants a housemate or do you know anyone that wants to um, rent a space together and, man- and I managed to find um, two friends um, that were looking to also rent a, a, a place they both were initially uh, staying with landlords but they also wanted to move out because they were having those issues like they cannot cook um, and they wanted to cook at home yeah so then we all rented a space together and split the cost um, so the other consideration was also space. So like living with two other people, right? Like we wanted to get a space big enough for like three people. So I always find that like, so I have this rule where if you're going to live with other people, um, each person needs to have like 400 square feet. 
for themselves. <laughs> it's like, so if like any what? issues, right? Anything happen, right? At least yeah. you have like, I have 400 square feet of space to like chill, you know, mm-hmm. and like cool That's down true. and stuff yeah. like that. So the place that we run is pretty, I would say it's pretty big. It's about 1,000-ish square feet. Uh, and each room is actually pretty spacious also. Um, so, you know, I mean, sometimes you get into minor disagreements with your housemates. You've got a little bit of tension here and there. So it's good to have like your own space to cool off. Imagine like yeah, studio, like a small studio and you like, if you're staying with your partner and then two of you fight. No, <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. As, as I like to say, if, if you want to break up sooner, then move into a studio apartment with your partner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll be on the fast lane to not sure what, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree though. I agree that space uh, should be... Uh, a major consideration on top of cost uh, and I think you know because me for me personally I also am looking for a bigger space in the future not anytime soon mm-hmm. and I'm always going for the listings that are like reasonably big you know not like not, none of that I filter out studio apartments what, sorry what's reasonably big for you like two bedroom or three bedroom or maybe three bedroom okay. uh, yeah. So, so so if let's say like so yeah, I think uh, it's really important. Yeah. So let's say if like mm-hmm. like you live with another person in a, in a three bedroom flat, then if you fight, then you have the extra bedroom to like fight in, <laughs> then the other two bedroom is space. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Yes, that's right. We can definitely uh, work out a system that works for <laughs> for the both of us. <laughs> it can yeah. be like a rage room. So, <clears throat> yeah, but. Uh, Oh my god! Yeah, like the do, do you know that room that you go to? You can pay for to like smash things up. Yeah, yeah it's that. Basically, it's that. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot about <clears throat> um, space and cost as like important considerations. You know, when you're looking for a place to rent, and I think it's very important. Like to me, cost is also quite important, uh, which is why I was very grateful for like um, being able to to rent this room from my friend's family and I think this is something people can consider right like maybe you know if you find that all the listings you're going through are too expensive you could think about trying to find like uh, off the market options I guess like Marcus your house is what what do you say a friend of a friend's yeah yes, so yeah I, I mean I think for, for people out there who, who are like I don't know if you're dying to leave but if you are you can consider asking around uh, to see if there's a, a room that you can rent from a friend or even like friend of a friend or, or, or a distant relative. I'm not sure, you know, mm-hmm. um, but I'm pretty sure that if you find these um, off the market options, the the cost of your rental will definitely go down. And I think if you're moving out for the first time, I think it sounds, I think it's a pretty sweet deal. Lah. I mean, provided the place you move into is like, everything is okay you know because i have heard of like a friend you know she did move out as well uh, i think it was last year that she moved out during the the whole after after lockdown in singapore and at first the room was like it seemed okay the landlord seemed fine everything was normal she's like oh my god this is like below market rate and i get my own room and everything and then it was only after she moved in that um she realized the the, the actual problem was that the landlord and her other tenant the other tenant they have like very bad hygiene practices <laughs> like um for example they will not wash the dishes until they need the dishes to be washed to use them oh. again <laughs> and oh. and then um you know at night at night cockroaches will come out for oh, a bit of a rain you know, like it's party time i know it's so nasty and i'm just like well i don't know if i don't know if that cost the, the price of that room is is worth it anymore because yeah, no, I mean, no it, more money. No more money will like make me want to live in a house where like cockroaches come out and have a rave at night. Okay, like, I do not exactly. want to be in that situation. I cannot. I, I <laughs> no way, man. Like even in my own place right now, like if I see one cockroach in the kitchen at night and they like to come out in the kitchen, I just forget it. Like the other night, I was like, okay, I really have to pee. Thank God, I went to the kitchen. I saw one cockroach and I was like, I don't have to pee anymore. And I just went back to bed. I just forced myself to go to sleep. Then I woke then you up really all early next into morning. Your body. You're like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm like, goodbye. I- I'm done. Y'all can have the kitchen for the night. You know, I'm I'm an un- I'm a very understanding housemate. So... <laughs> Yeah. yeah so so you know it's all these things you know and i want to ask you guys like you know when you guys rent do you have any 
interesting I, I mean i won't say nightmare experiences like because maybe not everyone has like nightmare experiences but what about interesting experiences uh as you guys rent uh maybe you can start with uh nicole first yeah yeah i think i don't have any nightmarish experience or cockroaches cockroach dreams <laughs> cockroach dreams, thank god <laughs> so far oh, yeah. in any of the places that i rent so i was pretty lucky la, in that sense like i didn't have um too bad of experiences but there was one time where um well we 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 had an empty room in um the place that i was staying and we were looking for someone to take up the room uh and, <laughs> and so so we were me and my housemates so my housemates were so female um and so we were asked i was just asking her like oh would you be okay if you know a guy stayed with us you know because at that time it was like circuit breaker just after circuit breaker and we were kind of worried that we cannot find anybody for the room so we were just thinking like okay like just open it up to like everybody to try and get someone in the room so that we can split the rent so she was like saying like yeah sure you know i, I don't mind if a guy stays with us i'm actually pretty comfortable are you comfortable and i was like yeah i'm comfortable also with the guy so we had a guy who basically um was interested in the room and then you know we we vet obviously we vet him first right so he came over and then he kind of looked at the room and then we kind of sussed him out so both of us didn't really have like got any red flags uh, about the guy so we were just like okay i'll just uh, collect mm. the deposit from him and yeah. then uh, give him the key and everything so he moved in um two weeks later uh, my housemate like came to me and she was like oh hey um so I have something really interesting to tell you. I was in the kitchen the other day and basically the guy the guy came into the kitchen and then he was basically hitting on her. So he hit on her and oh, he, he tried to make a move on her God. and then made her like super uncomfortable. Lah. So then after that I was like, okay, so what do you want to do about it? She's I, like, maybe, you know, I think I think it's fine. Uh, maybe I'm reading too much into it. But like a month later, um, Mm-hmm. She basically messaged me and she was like, "Hey Nicole, I can't take it anymore. He's like hitting on me like constantly. Um, can we ask him to like leave?" Uh, so obviously it was a very tricky situation because the guy right. moved in for like oh. a month. Also, right? What kind of guy is that, right? Like the first thing you do, move in and you already hit on your house. Yeah. Like, what, the, what the hell? It's like, like. Got probation period on what? I mean, just self-impose a probation period. Don't do shit for like three months or more. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. And it's not even like something like organic, yeah. you know. You know, like those like ro- romantic comedies where like yeah, <laughs> like oh, you became housemate and then you became <laughs> friends and yes. then you got like a montage in the middle. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> there was no one touch. Exactly. <laughs> and then somebody's like, oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no no man touch part. Uh, so so at the end, um um uh, so we decided to ask him to leave. So we sat him down, told him that, you know, we're more comfortable with uh, all girls in the house. Initially we thought we were okay with guys. So we didn't really put it on him. We just kinda said that, oh, you know, we didn't think that we would be comfortable. And then we asked him to leave. He was pretty understanding about the whole thing. Um my hunch is also he kind of knew that it was because of his behavior, um. So he left. So I guess that is that is yeah. an interesting experience. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about you, Marcus? That's just terrible. I would, I would die. Yeah, Marcus. Any any interesting uh, strange men coming in to hit on you <laughs> or your <laughs> wife? <laughs> uh, he hits on his wife all the time. <laughs> Hit on now, uh, not hit okay, uh. okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but actually, more like this house, uh, we attract different kind of pests. So we attract uh, lots of <laughs> <laughs> pests in the animal variety. So in this house, uh-huh. it's because it's quite old, and then we are uh, surrounded by our our garden is like quite big in the front and the back. And it's not kept, not kept well, so it's like full of bushes and stuff like that, basically. And so there's, it promotes a lot of wildlife, lah. So <laughs> the cute ones are like you can see squirrels, uh, quite a lot. Oh, right? cute! Um, squirrels, not the not the cute kind, not like on TV, like the Chip and Dale kind. <laughs> it looks like rats, with really long. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, those. Uh, and then, um, so you find lots of lizards. When we moved in, it's like full of lizard poop all over the. And we're all over the perimeter, lah. Basically, they they like <laughs> lay of the land is like all uh, it's a poop, lah. So it's like you cannot even start to 
clean it all, you know, you just like give up uh, immediately. Okay. I'm gonna leave the desserts. And then after that, right. uh, I saw the ants. So one morning we woke up to the kitchen full, the floor was full of ants. Like, I'm not kidding, like they were like in different different corners of the kitchen, taking over different different corners of the space. Then like to clean up for me it was like how do I even start, you know? Like, take a mop and just mop them away? Or like, <laughs> how do you? <laughs> Sorry, I hate ants. I hate ants so much. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Luckily, it's just black ants. Nah. So, okay. I just took a took a cloth and then, you know, manual, just wipe it, wipe them all off. Um, okay. And then there was one time we found a dead snake inside the, underneath the sink. I That's don't even know. Yeah, oh I don't even God. know how the snake got in there because the, the, the sink is all sealed, you know? So, yeah. I don't know how they open and slither inside. But luckily, uh, it's a dead one. Huh? It, was, it was a dead snake. snake. Oh, God. Mm. But the worst one is actually like the wildlife in the area. It's all the, the cats. Mm-hmm. So, they usually, the cats usually like to poop in the porch. So, you will find like fresh, <laughs> fresh uh, uh, remains and gifts and stuff every morning. They're marking their territory. <laughs> yeah, man, they are. <laughs> It's just the ones you see, you know, I don't know what else they do in like that. Um, but one really special occasion was like, uh, actually we woke up one morning and they left their deposit in like the porch, the driveway. They left their deposit. Like, the cars. <laughs> yeah, the so they left the offering there. The offering uh, okay. was really like so smelly, very fresh. Never mind, okay, so I took the hose and I uh, washed it off. But then the, the offering, right, was so dense that it left a mark on the floor, like a white mark, like... <laughs> I guess it was acidic or something, like, but it cleaned the thing. So, you know, there was a nice shape of it. <laughs> so now we yeah. like, So I leave this poop shape on the porch. <laughs> what do I do with this? So I tried to wash it on it, but couldn't, you know, like, I couldn't, it was... Clear poop mark. <laughs> so I had to buy a concentrated wash, to wash all the floors to take away the, the stain now basically. Yeah. Right. So right. The, oh wow. Yeah, that was the best. Uh, thanks. <laughs> that was the best. Thank, yeah. Thanks for thanks for sharing your, your shit story. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shitty situation, I, I yes. see. Yes. Um <laughs> yeah. it seems yeah. like a lot of the animals just like want to poop everywhere in your house and the lizards and the, the cats and everything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now with like my kid, right, I'm like, now I have to clean the poop because like she's putting everything in her mouth. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Huh? Like, what's the plastic in your mouth? What's the in your mouth? <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's just the cat poop. It's the cat poop. <laughs> Because she's so oh, fast, you know? <laughs> she's so and she's so strong when she has it in her hands, right? <laughs> you have you like you're doubting yourself, like am I strong or not? Why why can't I open her hands? <laughs> oh, there's nothing harder to open than a than a baby's closed fist. I sort of go. Yes, they are like definitely. I'm not sure where they get their strength from, but yeah. Yeah, yeah please please be careful. I don't want your child to accidentally ingest some acidic cat shit. <laughs> yeah. One <laughs> yeah. it will happen now one of these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, okay, so like for people who are thinking of uh, renting a place in Malaysia, beware the cat poop. Landed. I mean, mm. yeah, yeah, if it's landed, uh, uh, somehow Marcus regards a dead snake less terrible than cat shit, so <laughs> I, I, would, I would flip it around because I'm scared, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> you know, it would have been yeah. a different story if the snake was alive. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, true. Yeah. true. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's fair, less interesting because yeah. yeah. it's dead, right? You're okay. Like, oh, so, the party's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would have been like interesting. And Marcus was like, yeah, and I fought the snake, you know, I wrestled it with my bare head. <laughs> no, his baby fought won. the snake. <laughs> Man versus wild. <laughs> his child fought the snake <laughs> with a closed fist. <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh my god, yeah. Get off. <laughs> and I say, what are you waiting? <laughs> <laughs> Keep up <on> now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um hey, um call, call call me call me if that ever happens. I wanna I hope it doesn't it happen. How <laughs> <laughs> yeah. best control straight and like is it all sticks mm-hmm. out of our hands? Just pray yeah, and come back, that's it. Yeah. God. Alright. Yeah. Okay, so um snakes, uh cat poop and creepy men aside, um yeah, thanks for sharing your uh, very interesting experiences, uh, both of you. Uh, 
I want to ask, you know, so now that, you know, after we've talked about all of this, um, let's say, okay, let's say there's somebody who asks you like, hey, I'm moving out for the very first time. Okay. So what, what's your advice for me? What should I keep in mind? I think for me, Maybe, um, yeah. like for someone that's moving out for first time, right? I think the first thing that they have to ask themselves is like, why, why are they moving out? And from there, that that's going to guide their decision on the place that they're going to find. Right. So if I'm moving out mm-hmm. because like, for example, you move to another country or you move to another state for work, then obviously you're going to find, you're going to look for places where it's close to your office, where you don't have to commute so much. Um, cost is going to be a factor as well. Um, things like that. Uh, but in Singapore, a lot of times, like you don't mm-hmm. really need to move out from your parents' place. Right. So a lot of times when people move out, it's usually for sanity reasons right like maybe it's a little bit more healthy to live outside than mm-hmm. to live in your parents place so um you might be tight yeah, on cash sure. also so one thing i would consider is that um maybe look for a place where you can you know have housemates or um like what you said earlier like find someone who's able to rent to you a room at below market rate i think if you if you tell people like what your situation is like I think they might be a bit understanding, especially mm. if it's friends, right? Or friends of friends. So you may be able to get a space yeah, um, for, yeah, for a period of time for a lower cost um, uh, if, if you know, they're understanding about that situation. Yeah, but you know, if you're moving out for other reasons, for work, yeah, yeah. Um, then you want to consider like space, right? You want to think about like, okay, if I'm moving, I'm, if I'm moving in with my partner, right? Obviously, the four, for me, the 400 square feet rule applies uh, applies especially when you are with a partner because I think that yeah. that um, that situation uh, cannot be helped <laughs> when when you're living together. Lots yeah, of yeah. Um, so yeah, space and you know if um, if um, cost is a factor, also you have to consider it in conjunction with other stuff that you're uh, that you that you're looking for when you rent a place. So for example, right. You may get a very good price on rent, but if the place is unfurnished, mm-hmm. then you'll have to pay more to get the furnishing in the in the house, right? So mm-hmm. you might have to buy furniture, yeah. or you might have to like buy a buy a fridge or a washing machine and put it in the house. So it might actually cost you more. Um, and as compared to mm-hmm. getting like maybe playing slight, slightly higher in getting a fully furnished place, so one good thing about a fully furnished place is that you don't have to put in your furnishing, your own furnishing. And um, the cost of actually maintaining that furnishing this is actually borne by your landlord. So you don't actually have to actually pay the cost for it. Right. I mean, it depends on your contract. La, but uh, my contract mm-hmm. with my landlord in Singapore is that we only pay like a minimum amount. I think it's like 150. And then anything else above that. So let's say for your aircon, your fridge, or if your washing machine like broke mm-hmm. down, um, you won't have to foot the cost. It's actually borne by the landlord. So, in a way, oh, okay. in a way, so getting fully furnished could actually be cheaper over the long run than if you get an unfurnished place. So, I guess that's like a, yeah. a tip for people who are looking to rent. Yeah. 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 I think these are good things to consider. Mm. Yeah. What about what about you, Marcus? Uh, yeah. What would be your advice? Can for me, uh, for the both of us, for me and my wife, we kind of consider like three, like three kind of steps. So the foundation is that emotional and mental consideration first. So we ask ourselves, can we stay with our parents now? We want that option or not? So basically, the answer is no. So okay, can we <laughs> cannot stay with parents, all right? Never mind. So the next consideration, can we stay with other people? Uh, we were thinking like, no, maybe not strangers. So thinking like, who else can we stay with? And family members still okay or not we had to consider that for a while and we thought uh, okay i can accept at least staying with uh, somebody uh, like a relative so which we eventually did um from then since we already had that base we went to the next step which is how much money we want to spend uh, so we had financial considerations so we were very like practical with how much money we can spend towards this so that made the priority like that's that informed where we can look where, where we can look mm. for a place to stay right um and so far actually we looked at other places as well but then in the end why we chose this house is because uh all the needs are met like, in the pyramid right so we can stay we, we can stay with other people it meets our financial costs and then the last one was um convenience a little bit of convenience so we were thinking like okay um 
Did we want to move some place that's close to family? Do we want to move some place close to work? Um, do we want to move to some place that uh, that was a little bit more safe? Those kind of con- uh, considerations. At the end of the day, it's third. It's like uh, bonus lah. So when we got this place, it's kind of just really in the middle. So there's like convenient location, but totally empty. You know. Right. Uh, yeah, and it's like safe neighborhood, but. Uh, all the fixed fixed things are like really old, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, all these kind of things lah. So we use this matrix lah to kind of like decide lah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, okay. on the on the topic of convenience, right? Like the main main reason that I rented my place with my friends when we first, when I first moved here was that mm-hmm. what sold us on renting that place is that it's literally right next to the MRT exit. <gasps> It's just oh, hey, you, wow, you then... walk like one minute and it's the exit already. So when we oh. when we saw the place, right, like uh, it's nice and everything. It's slightly above our budget, but then we were thinking like the MRT is just right there. It's just right yeah. there. You don't even have to walk very far. So yeah. that was the reason why we got the place actually. And then now, right, oh. every time I get like if I'm taking a taxi back, I take a grab back, right, I always like so proudly go and tell the great uncle you see the MRT there you see the MRT there 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 <laughs> that's where I see like it's not like my house like that oh my <laughs> god yeah. I love I love how proud you are of your house is um, it not the, the location place, of it the location of it yeah exactly <laughs> it, no yeah yeah it, it is it is pretty good yeah like if I had to you know like, like for me if I had to consider if I'm going to pick my next place to rent right, I would also consider that la, like location. If it's right next to the MRT, who don't want? You know, seriously. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think you know, for for people out there who who are thinking of like you know going out for moving out for the first time, yeah, I think what Marcus and Nicole have shared are like super helpful tips. Um, I would even go go as far as to say like you know when you choose a place like, uh, I think trust your gut. You know, if you're uh, most of the time our instincts are are right la. Yeah. And uh, pick a place that really fits your needs, you know, like how Marcus like went through like emotional considerations first. No parents, number one, <laughs> and then after that, you know, consider like all the other things like costs. And when you figure out your budget for rent, then it also allows you to pick from different neighborhoods, Because like, then, I mean, different neighborhoods, uh, at least in Singapore, um, the the rentals will will differ. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, I think I've learned quite a lot about what it's like to to rent uh, in Malaysia as well today, uh, and we've covered quite a bit lah. I think the most common thing that we keep talking about is like, um, you know, consider your space, consider how much space you're gonna get, right? Um, consider the cost and also like sanity and also sanitary uh, <laughs> things, you know. Uh, yeah. To, Throw oh. back to the cockroach rave party there, <laughs> or, or <laughs> like know. cat, yeah, um, cat poops, <laughs> cat, cat, area. cat, cat poop. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah. So these are all like very valid things to consider, you know, before you move out for the very first time. And I think, I think you know, whoever goes out to like rent a place, I'm sure there'll be a lot of other interesting experiences. Hopefully, not as interesting as creepy men hitting on you within two weeks of moving in you know hopefully not that yeah. um pro tip like i think that's like a pro tip right out there like <laughs> that's like a pro tip right? yeah, like, you know, yeah. Like, people right at least you know if you're a guy or a girl you know you don't just go and hit on people yeah. you want to live with la. <laughs> i think it's just good yeah to man it's not like Man, it's not a meet cute every time. You can't force it. Right. And it's not a meet cute anymore. <laughs> you should put in a questionnaire, you know, before we join. Yeah, man. Yeah. Put in a questionnaire. Like how 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 often do you feel on your roommates? Like uh, <laughs> what's the lead in time? Yeah, months. Okay. Valid, valid. You know what? Reasonable. Yes. Yeah, on yeah. to you. On to you, Nicole. No, because you were talking about the meat cute, and I was just having this mental image in my head where, like, you're in the kitchen and you're look, reaching for the fork, and you're like, the fork at the same time, and it's like, it's like you touch your hand and you go look oh. at each other. No, that's not. That's not how it goes. Guys. I have a, I have a terrible thing. When you said that thing, right? I had a terrible thing that I wanted to say, but I'll say it offline after we're done with this episode. Um. <laughs> So anyway, uh, thank, thanks guys for, for coming onto the episode to share your experiences with me and, and with, with everyone else, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, right, to whoever out there who wants to move out, right, um, 
I mean, as long as you don't bump into, like, like I said, weird guys or snakes or cat shitting outside your door. Uh, if you are staying alone, you know, whether it's with people you know or people you don't know, you're bound to build more independence lah, as you stay alone. And I think that's one of the best experiences I think you could ever give yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, uh, thanks guys. And you're welcome. I think that's it for today. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. You're welcome. That's a wrap on another episode of Keep It Simple. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe. And also leave a comment, especially if you like these faces. I mean, even if you don't like these faces, please comment anyway because we want to know what you think. And we're also on Spotify, Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. So if you're on those platforms, remember to subscribe for new episodes. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple.